So you may have already heard about modular content, atomized content, or you might have even watched the videos on modular content and the CMS hidden superpowers, which I'll put in the corner. To have modular content, to have atomized content, you first need to structure it. You need to model how your content will fit together. And that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover how to model your content so that you can use your headless CMS to create fantastic, engaging customer experiences. Right, let's get to it. So let's start with a content module. What is it? A content module is one of the building blocks of content. It's a package of content which contains elements like pieces of text or even elements that in themselves are other modules of content. So what is a content structure? The content structure is the definition of all of those modules assembled together. It's kind of the map of a large piece of content and how all of the modules connect together to create an experience. So how does that actually relate to a page? Well, a page is just a content structure. Content modules assemble together to give you that page experience. So how far can you go in terms of breaking down pieces of content? Well, the best way of thinking about it is to keep breaking content down into their packages, into their modules. When you get to the point where you start breaking the content down into such smaller pieces, they kind of lose their overall context to the content, then you've gone too far. For example, if you start breaking it down into words or into characters, you may have gone a bit too far. How does this relate to a headless CMS? Headless CMSs will regard content modules as things called content types. They're the definition that the developer gives a piece of content that business users can use to assemble content and build customer experiences. In Ampliance, we went a step further. We divided up content types actually into two pieces. We defined them into content schemas, and that's the technical definition definition with all the rules that you need for defining a piece of content. And then we have content types themselves, which is the business definition of content. It basically takes the schema and wraps it up to make it more accessible to a business user. Things like thumbnail describing that content type, a visualization of that content type, or even a card that gives you a mini visual preview of a content item that has been built from a content type. So how do you build a structure using content? content types. You connect these content types together and you do that through different types of linking. So you can have a contains link such as a banner contains an image. You can have lists of links such as a carousel can contain a list of banners. You can have parent and child hierarchies, which are really useful for creating menus and navigation. You can have slots that contain a reference to a piece of content that might continually change over time. And you can have content references, like having a store referencing a location. The location's not a part of that store exactly. You maintain that somewhere else, but you want to have a reference to that so you can do a location finder. Ultimately, by linking content, you create content structures. The great thing about linking content together is all of the parts of content, all of those modules are reusable. If you have the opportunity of creating one piece of content, reusing it in lots of places, and once you publish it once, it publishes it everywhere. So if you update one module, created by a content type and publish it. It will also update all the content structures that are also using that module. It massively speeds up the maintenance of content. The problem with the old world, things were ultimately hard coded into HTML. They were very difficult to reuse. Even a small update, you could end up having to update hundreds of pieces of content just because you've only got cut and paste reusability. And in that older world, it was very easy for things to go wrong. It was really difficult to create and maintain consistency across all of your content items. Structured content can be great, but it's still important to get it right. And this is where content modeling comes in. Content modeling is really the process in which you design your content model, your content structure before you implement it. And you can think of three different types of content models. You have content models that model your business concepts, your products or your services or demands 
specific contexts, such as say workouts, diet, recipes in a fitness business. And then you have user experience models. These are components like carousels, banners, blogs, and menus. Then you can have the technical content models that you would use for things like app configuration. Things like React component settings, page settings, configuration of your navigation, the things that would ultimately drive your app experience. And you may have many of these models because you may have different applications, such as your primary web application, your native mobile application, or even a voice application. To create these content models, you need to have a team that brings together the business, the developers, and your creative designers. And together, you can model your content structures, how the developer's gonna use them in the application, how the business is ultimately gonna drive their business and create the experiences they need, and the creative designers have input in terms of how they're ultimately rendered in the application. Once the modeling is done, the developers can take the content models, implement them as schemas and content types that business users can then use to create content items and content structures. The app developers will then implement them as application components. And ultimately these will be formed into a component library that's shared between the creative designers, the business and the developers. When new requirements come in, you can decide whether you need new components and new content types. What you end up with is a a library of content types that helps you model your business and model your applications and a library of components that are then used to build those applications. And that's all we've got time for today. If you want to know anything else about modular content, headless CMS, have a look at the rest of the videos in my channel. And if you like this video, can you please scroll down a little bit, ping that like button so that everybody else can benefit from this video. And it's now time to say thank you. Goodbye, and I'll see you next time.